Mexico's border with America is clustered with clinics providing unusual treatments for cancer. Alternatives to conventional medicine that offer a complete cure, even for the terminally ill, in return for tens of thousands of dollars. This is your life. And if you saw my website, it says, how much would you pay for your life? But is there any proof that these cures actually work? Or does this multi-million dollar industry just trade on the hopes of those desperate to survive. Sarah McDonald, who has been treated for cancer herself, went undercover to find out. Tijuana, Mexico, a mecca for cheap prescription drugs, plastic surgery, and alternative cancer therapy clinics, offering everything from hypothermia, sonophotodynamic therapy, and insulin potentiation, all with the promise of salvation. London, England, home to some of the world's leading cancer research institutions and hospitals, one of which I'm returning to today to see my oncologist. Last year, I discovered I had breast cancer. Sarah, you had a lump in the breast, which you found yourself, and it was certainly suspicious. There's a lesion that looks abnormal. It turned out I had a 13 and a half centimeter tumor in my breast. I immediately started chemotherapy, then had a mastectomy, followed by a month of intensive radiotherapy. It was pure living hell. The problem with chemotherapy is it's very unpleasant. But some patients, chemotherapy can improve the survival chances by 50% or more. So therefore, it's terribly worthwhile. But sadly, for a lot of patients, we still don't have the cure, and it comes back. Now, there comes a time when we don't have anything else to offer. And with that death sentence, a cancer patient will begin trawling the internet, desperate to find some way to stay alive. If I type in to the internet cure for cancer, it comes up with 22 million results. Very quickly, you will come across alternative cancer therapy sites. As you go through, you'll come across uh, like this, Oasis of Hope Hospital in Tijuana. At the moment, they are offering a special deal. In 2003, I got lung cancer. But the most important message on these websites is the personal testimony of survival. We came down and I was cured. So I thank God every day and don't ever give up hope. After testimonials come the conspiracy theories. Watch out. Big Brother is trying to take over. This is Kurt Donsbar. He says he has three doctorates in alternative it therapies. It is not unlike Hitler. He implies the authorities are preventing alternative clinics from offering life-saving treatments. If I want to rub cow on my head to cure cancer, I ought to have that right. Dr. Donspar ran a Tijuana cancer therapy clinic, promising high survival rates. It attracted the wife of civil rights campaigner Martin Luther King Jr. Battling late-stage ovarian cancer, Coretta Scott King died there. I don't have a medical background. I have not a clue if what is on offer is offering real salvation or a false hope. So I'm on the road to Britain's Exeter University, where Professor Edzard Ernst has spent the last 18 years conducting clinical trials into the efficacy of alternative therapies. One can quite clearly say there is no alternative cancer cure. Full stop. And there will never be one. Because if today we find that something might work, then it will become mainstream oncology. I've brought a list of alternative cancer therapies on offer at clinics in Tijuana, Mexico. Ozonated hypothermia, what is that? It's a complicated word for <laughs> Hypothermia means heating up the body. But it's not possible to overheat a person to, to the degree necessary for cell death. Uh, which would be well in excess of 42 degrees, um, you, you, would, you would kill a person. Uh, they're irresponsible 
Uh, they are also criminal because the, the claims are not supported by evidence and are therefore illegal, uh, but cannot be prosecuted because the Internet is more or less uncontrollable. Los Angeles, California. I've flown in for the 39th Cancer Control Society Convention. It's the one weekend of the year when some of the Tijuana clinics come into the U.S. to tout their treatment to the public. Pulsating electromagnetic energy fields. We're basically duplicating Earth subtle frequencies. Exhibitors are selling everything from cancer cure mushrooms, cancer detection imagery, detoxification to decompression, and magnetic field therapy. This device is plugged into some place in a circuit. From there, we've got six copper coils, two at the feet, two at the mid-body, and two at the shoulder level. It actually enables the human cell to fight or change the situation for cancer. I've planted an informed mole inside the convention to assess what's on offer and unravel the scientific jargon. It's so dangerous and so difficult to navigate because you cannot easily prioritize what is shown to be proven and what is all a scam. Professor Lenz is part of a revolutionary new Cancer Commons initiative that offers cancer patients treatment and clinical trials based on their tumor genomic subtype. It's scientific and evidence-based, unlike what's on offer here. Photodynamic treatment, nobody really knows what that means. It means something with photo energy and some things you take in order to enhance the sensitivity, but the components really don't add up. They say what they do, and there are testimonials, but there are no data. This is not evidence-based. This is emotionally driven. Hope for Cancer is one Tijuana clinic. The brochure is extremely impressive, but it becomes very clear something must be wrong because on the cover it always, already says, you win the cancer battle. These are technologies or treatments which have not been proven in any kind of control setting to be beneficial. Hello, I'm phoning from Al Jazeera Television. Yes, hello, I'm phoning from Al Jazeera. I, was wondering I decide to phone a number of the Tijuana clinics, including Hope for Cancer, to see if they'll let us in to film. Okay. None would, fine. but I'm going anyway. There's one way to make my story seem more plausible. The crew has gone ahead with the Cancer Control Society. It's running a bus tour to the Tijuana clinics. But I'm following separately to begin my own undercover investigation. Your packets have a card that uh, describes alternative therapies. The Society's president is hosting today's tour around five clinics. Some of his guests are seeking education, some salvation. People have gotten healed. And I know that you can't use the word cure because it's almost become like a four-letter word. But if people are taking their time and their money to go across the border to get a treatment that is helping them and their survival rate has increased, I think that says it all. We decided to keep quiet about it at home because we probably expected to have a lot of flack. Uh, our oncologist was not happy at all and he told us that there was absolutely no alternative treatment. There's a distinct us and them friction on the bus between alternative and conventional therapy. But ultimately, it all comes back to this. This is my father who died a month ago. I'm kind of broken because I feel that he could have been helped. Had they had this kind of treatment right here in Tijuana, and doctors with their knowledge, he would have probably been able to uh, been safe. From clinical rejection and a journey into the unknown, the travelers are soon greeted with messages of faith and hope. My sister has fourth stage metastatic breast cancer. Uh, how effective is, is BioCare and Dr. Rodriguez when it comes to a situation that's pretty dire? Okay, that's going to be difficult. Why am I doing this? Because I love to see people suffering? No. Because I like to see people succeeding. 
That's why I'm doing this. And I have seen cases where I have been short of signing the death certificate that walk out of the hospital and I still see them in conventions or meetings or anything like that. My sister-in-law is fighting for her life right now. and She's in a critical stage with her cancer. We're fighting for her right now and hopefully we can still try. We're not giving up on her. The National Institutes for Health in the US asked all these clinics to submit their best results for evaluation. Not one responded. When I talk to a doctor that says, we only believe in, in evidence-based medicine, First of all, if you have a patient and he comes to one or more of these clinics and three or four months later, six months later, he goes back to his physician and there is no cancer, it's gone, uh, to me, that's evidence. I've got an appointment at 12.30. I've come to Hope for Cancer. It was one of the clinics at the Cancer Control Society convention in Los Angeles and among those that denied me access to film openly. It's, I suppose it's that in the conventional medicine, you know, they, they don't offer you anything but a few statistics. I know, I know. Well, and here, the, sti the st <laughs> statistics that we offer aren't that great either as far as in writing. But what I can tell you is what I see. As I'm led to the clinical director's room, I wonder what survival statistics he'll promise me. Part of the cell is to make sure it's better than what my doctors in London can offer. Sarah, yes, nice to meet you. I tell Dr. Tony my breast cancer tumor has returned. He begins with a complex pseudoscientific lecture. And chemotherapy affects these, and radiation therapy affects those, but they do not do anything for cancer stem cells. Right. On the contrary, they make these more resistant and potentially more aggressive. In conventional medicine, our problem is that we're trying to get rid of all tumor and we get rid of the patient. Right. right. That, that's the chemo. What? You think it kills people? Mm -hmm. What is your breast cancer success rate like? I could tell you the success rate for stage 4 cancer in general. Yeah. Okay. The success rate is 70%. What does that mean? That means that these patients in stage 4, you know, the, you see, 74% of them live at least five times past the expected prognosis. Right. 30% of these 70% go into full term remission. There's a lot of, you know, wonderful testimonies and mm -hmm. things, but it's more about where the figures are really coming from. Because you know what it's like when I mean, people can make them up. If you look on statistics and maybe you have a conventional thing, yeah. you know, if you really look, maybe you know what the reality is. And then, you know, the other thing is those statistics are not on you, they're on other people, so everyone is unique. He fobs me off on his lack of evidence and sends me on a tour of the treatments. This room right here, we're gearing up to have to be our IPT room. They lower your blood sugar so that your cells will open up wide because your cancer cells are hungry. They do a, a dose of uh, poly-MVA and then your cancer cells will just eat on that poly-MVA and you know poly-MVA is anti-cancer and immune right. enhancing. It's a supplement, it's all safe right. and healthy. So. Well, what is poly-MVA? Uh, I don't really know how to explain it to right. you. Poly-MVA has not been tested on humans in peer-reviewed trials, only on gerbils. Still, it's $34,000 cash up front. The clinics here are doing a massive hard sell. There are Japanese, there are Australasians, Asians, there are Europeans, all coming into these clinics in search of hope and salvation. We are heading to meet with the head of oncology for the Baja Health Authority. When a person has cancer, pues siempre busca la alternativa, siempre busca por por naturaleza, pues la ayuda y el, la, el, el hambre de querer vivir, el hambre de querer curarse, pues obviamente tanto al oncólogo lo ven como ven lo, lo que se le ofrezca por, por fuera. Entonces ese es un círculo vicioso. 
porque la misma gente, la misma población que tiene la enfermedad busca ese tipo de tratamientos y obviamente pues ahí va en el negocio pues los otros médicos. Then in your opinion, what does that make these clinics? Definitivamente. Están lucrando con la vida de la gente. Tanto en la práctica pública como en la práctica privada encontramos gente que se fue a medicina alternativa porque fueron engañados que se iban a curar esa enfermedad, entonces llegan con enfermedades avanzadas. Tenemos que convencerlos de que lo que estaban haciendo está mal y tenemos que darles el tratamiento ideal y mejorarles. Y sí logramos mujer, mejorar mucho esas circunstancias. The biggest revelation is that these clinics are primarily operating under a much looser, less restrictive palliative care license, a hospice license, to look after patients at the end of their lives, not to offer a cure. I felt pretty tearful actually during the interview because he is saying that pretty much blanket, these alternative therapy clinics are just a sham, a total and utter sham. And while I instinctively know that human nature is driving this business, he, he wants us to stay away. He doesn't want us here in Mexico. He says that it's because of us that these clinics exist. Meanwhile, Frida and Don continue their journey through the clinics in search of something that may save his dying sister. All of the clinics that we've seen so far offer her some hope because there's no hope in the United States because of the limitations uh, with their therapies over there. Next on my target list is Kurt Donsbar's old clinic, Hospital Santa Monica, where Coretta Scott King died. It's been renamed Alpha Medical Clinic and moved to new premises. Thank you very much. Dr. Humberto Barbosa used to work very closely with Donsbar. We do ultraviolet uh, light and we also do the photosonodynamic therapy. You have to be very careful with these things here. Why? So, why? why? Because, yeah. of, you know, Mexican law is very, uh, is not too tight like in the US. Why? Also in England. Why, yeah. If you want to uh, cut your life, do chemotherapy and it, radiation. Really, you think I would die earlier from doing that? Yeah, do that, yes. So I'll die if I go back to London and conventional medicine, but I'll live if I come here. This time it's 21,000 in cash. It's your life. And if you saw on my website, it says, how much would you pay for your life? It's very simple. Here's the border between Tijuana and the US. Over there, it's illegal to promote a cancer cure without evidence. It's illegal to tell someone you can give them a statistical chance of survival unless you have the evidence. It's fraud. So Dr. Tony and Dr. Barbosa could be jailed for what they have just offered me. And that's the reason they're here and not over there. There are a lot of things that will cure cancer. I've talked to you about hyperthermia. In 2011, Kurt Donsbar was charged in a San Diego court with pretending to be a doctor spiking his internet supplements with banned and dangerous pharmaceuticals and promising an undercover FBI agent a cancer survival rate without any evidence to back it up. He also told them that he has a 60% success rate treating terminal cancer patients. What did he have to back it up? <coughs> Nothing at all. That's why he's so dangerous. Uh, Mr. Donsbach, to the charges alleged in count one, unlawfully practicing medicine, how do you now plead, not guilty or guilty? Guilty. San Diego prosecutors could not have charged Donsbar if he had remained in Tijuana, but he stepped across the border. He had a weekly radio show that he broadcast out of his offices in Chula Vista. And during that radio show, he would take call-in questions from people all over the country who would ask for his opinion or advice on certain medical conditions. This is what I ask as well, that you speak from your heart. On that same radio show, Donsbar promised Ramona Hale's father he could 99% cure his terminal prostate cancer if he came to his Tijuana Hospital Santa Monica and, of course, pay $23,000 cash up front. But Ramona's skepticism angered Donsbar. He slammed his fist down on the table. He says, you're out of here. He says, I'm sorry, Dora, you'll have to leave too. 
My father stood up like a child sobbing. His head was down. He couldn't even look at us. And he said, please, begging like a little, little baby. You know he said this. He says, please let me stay. I have money. I have lots of money. Please let me stay. Kurt Donsbaugh is a con man. They were netting 250000 American dollars a month. In an 18-month period, Donsbaugh turned over $32.5 million. Dr. Barboza was paid $1.199 million. Kurt Donsbaugh was jailed for 365 days and placed on 10 years probation that prevents him selling his supplements or allowing third parties to sell them on his behalf. But a quick no. look on the internet no, reveals Donsbaugh's name is still very much in business. I was unaware of this. And who's she? Um, she was his videographer and is marketing his supplements, which I believe is a violation of his, uh, his probation. The FBI discovered that one of Donsbaugh's natural therapies, quercetin, was spiked with pharmaceutical synthetic estrogen. Taking it without also taking blood thinners could lead to blood clots to the brain or heart. Yeah, I'm looking at your website yeah. um, about Quercetin Plus. Do you think that these will actually help to cure the cancer? Absolutely. You also say that if, you, if we have any questions for Dr. Donsbar, that you'd be able to put them to him? Well, right now, oddly enough, he's in jail. They gave him six months um, in jail because, um, you know, it's, uh, he's too successful. <laughs> They're always trying to do... Um, kill the messengers, you know, when somebody's trying to do something alternative to uh, what the establishment wants you to do, you know. So supposedly he can't answer questions anymore, but I can still get answers. You can't, you... I have a personal relationship with him. I don't answer things in, in print because I can get in trouble for that too. San Diego prosecutors have requested a copy of this conversation. Donsbar could serve longer in jail. But still, those in search of salvation keep coming. The ones who come to Tijuana, Mexico, don't come for statistics. They don't come uh, seeking peer-reviewed studies. They come for hope. Hope has been destroyed in the conventional oncology community. Too many of the oncologists with a very just almost cold, hard-hearted demeanor, tell a patient, there is nothing that can be done for you. I watched my father die of cancer, and uh, my sister-in-law's battling it. But I, I think the thing to do is to try to get her down here. I can't make that decision for her. It has to come from her. But my husband and I are probably our number one advocates to keep the fight. I mean, I, I have to believe that when you're still walking, you still have hope. You're talking. Just don't give up on people and put them out to pass. No, but because the doctor say, go home, don't know. get your affairs in order. There's a sense that the answer to life and death may well be here in Tijuana, because they all agree they've been abandoned by conventional medicine. It's an important criticism of us. I think we're getting it right now. I think there's much more of this sense of we've got to support people all the way through. And hopefully that's a way that we can combat this pressure on patients to go and sell their house and sell everything and have some valueless treatment. I've just emerged successfully out the other side of treatment for breast cancer. But I understand the fear and terror that someone must feel when they have been told they have a terminal illness. Human instinct means that they will seek survival. They will search out for hope. And it is that that these clinics offer. Hope, false hope. They prey on the most vulnerable and for one reason only, money. He looked up at me and his eyes welled with tears. And he softly said, Ramona, I made a really big mistake. I made a really big mistake. Ramona Hale's father died from prostate cancer the week Donsbar was arrested in April 2009.